My name is Merv Conroy. I'm a senior fellow at the Health Services Management Centre at the University of Birmingham and the principal investigator for this research I'm going to describe now. Um, the, uh, uh, the approach that has emerged from this three-year uh, research project and that we've evaluated is a, is a decision-making uh, approach, an ethical decision-making approach for doctors that they've told us through the pilots that uh, do, uh, it, it does improve their performance. Uh, the first of the two uh, projects that I'm going to describe met a clear gap in knowledge about uh, phrenesis applied in medical practice as there were no uh, large empirical studies investigating this topic in this context previously. Uh, now, the, uh, the plan for the uh, presentation is that I'll, I'll briefly explain the, uh, the concepts uh, that we used. Uh, the original three-year research project asked the, uh, yes, the most trusted profession in the UK, according to Richard Smarry, to find out what making ethically wise decision means to them and if it can be uh, cultivated with other, other uh, doctors. I will then, uh, I'll describe the findings in their final output forms in those three forms of the collective practical wisdom, which is a film series, a wisdom wheel app, and then uh, 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 the three stage process too, which is part of the app. Also the evaluation and impact through the application of these resources as, it, 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 as educational uh, uh, resources in, in pilots. And finally, I'll talk about how you could access the resources if you're interested in them uh, and the next steps for the research. So the, uh, the concepts, these concepts originally uh, from Aristotle and the Neo-Aristotelian uh, 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 people such as McIntyre have developed and reframed these concept, concepts, uh, and it is their practice virtue ethics, uh, uh, which is the underlying uh, uh, conceptual frame that we use in this, this study. Uh, uh, so conceptually virtues are on a continuum with a mean between uh, two vices or poles of too much and too little. And to give an to give an example, uh, courage is arguably a virtue between the vices of cowardice and rashness. Uh, the virtue of courage consists of having the proper amount of confidence and ability to tackle a difficult situation, uh, such as uh, a difficult conversation with uh, a, a colleague uh, about what you've just seen them do that you were not happy with. Uh, so that that would be an example. Uh, of uh, having uh, tackling a, a difficult situation, but too little confidence could be described as cowardice. Uh, too much confidence can lead to a rash and foolish decision. Uh, perhaps a, uh, an example of that is uh, that series, uh, Doctor Foster threatening to burn the arm of a uh, of the partner of of their um, of their patient. Uh, yes, uh, uh, that, that probably was a rash and foolish decision. So each virtue is on a continuum, but where is the right place for any given situation? Uh, now, we could say Captain Tom demonstrated amazing courage to do what he felt was the right thing in the circumstances, and the outcome was a benefit to so many people. So uh, we could say he used his practical wisdom and got his decision spot on. We could also say he had the virtues of being highly creative and entrepreneurial. Uh, so phrenesis, what is it? It's, it's sometimes called the executive virtue or the chair of moral debate uh, to enable navigation away through all the virtues of relevance to find the right decision. Now, neo Aristotelians, uh, Aristotelians like McIntyre have suggested that this can be a collective uh, rather than an individual character forming process. By collective, I mean inter and intra uh, practice uh, debate, more, more debate, more debating process uh, within and across the various practice based communities of healthcare. 
So, yes, uh, why use uh, phrenesis? So here I'm highlighting the specific issue we are addressing and why, uh, why, why apply the uh, phrenesis concept here. Uh, so uh, phrenesis has been called upon uh, by uh, practitioners and academics to uh, uh, try to navigate a various uh, a way through various considerations, such as the perplexing number of clinical guidelines uh, that are, are currently uh, available to uh, doctors. In 2012, there were 7,500 of these, according to Upshur, uh, and uh, they're added to at about 1,000 a year. So we could be up to 15,000 uh, guidelines at the moment. I don't know the exact number, but also other considerations might be social, fa family, carers, situations, psychological uh, factors such as mental health of the uh, of the patient and yes uh, of the doctor themselves and uh, the people around them to consider as well their resilience to consider in all this so it's different to this is how it should be done a deontological uh, approach of following the rule book or uh, the consequentialist approach of saying well at the end is the only thing that matters now, yes, so was there a rule book for Captain Tom and was he aware of what the outcome might be? I, I don't think so. Uh, instead, what we've got here is a non-prescriptive uh, uh, concept uh, approach that informs intra and inter-practice moral debate, as I, as I described uh, before. Uh, and in this case, yes, for the benefit of the patient and societal well-being. Uh, we could draw on the analogy from ancient Greece of Homer's poems being used, the Iliad uh, and the Odyssey being used by residents of uh, the uh, Athenian city-state to bring flourishing for all. What were the virtues that they could develop based on these uh, stories in the poems of the Trojan War? Uh, so that was it, really. Uh, the aim was to uh, create a moral debating resource, a contemporary moral debating resource for professional education that McIntyre uh, said was completely missing in uh, professional education these days, or certainly needed attention. Uh, and that had be, had an impact on the uh, cultivation of ethical practice. So uh, what did we do? This is what we did. We asked the medical community what it means to make wise decisions for their uh, patients uh, and their communities and can finish be cultivated. So uh, we interviewed and observed about 131 hospital doctors and GPs at all, uh, at all career stages and we consolidated the virtues they conveyed in their stories down to about 15 uh, virtues, in fact exactly 15 virtues. And then we asked the film director to, cre to create si initially six episodes uh, and the filming and viewing of early cuts helped to solidify the virtue set of, of 15. Uh, and the key is that not one of the participants conveyed all 15. This was the collective set conveyed in the stories across the uh, research participants. And yes, after the evaluation, uh, another episode was added. So that, that brought the full set to uh, seven. Uh, uh, and yes, we're still conveying 15 virtues. So what, what are the uh, virtues? And I'll, I'll come on to that. But the, the actual film series. So instead of the drama of uh, the military unit and Trojan War in Homer's poems, what we have here is uh, the drama associated with Jennifer, a hospital doctor, and Daniel, a GP. And you can see them maturing from medical school into experienced practitioners. And it conveys the uh, collective practical wisdom from all the uh, research participants, uh, the ethically wise and questionable, questionable decisions that span the continuum of each of the 15 virtues are conveyed. Now, the seven episodes, uh, I have others, other resources to go with them, tutor notes, character, patient profiles. Uh, and yeah, they, they, they come with uh, a wisdom wheel app as well which has been produced to be used alongside the film series as a three-stage 
uh, tool or separately uh, in practice. And uh, yeah, the aim, the aim is to uh, yeah create a, a contemporary moral moral debating resources for the medical profession, but for other healthcare professionals who want to cultivate wise decision making before, during, or after decisions are made. So, what are these thirteen virtues? Here they are, uh, and uh, you can see the one starred show the most common virtues conveyed in the the stories. Uh, respect for patient uh, values and beliefs, uh, negotiation with patient, uh, collaboration with, well, spouse, nursing staff, uh, paramedics, whoever. Uh, talking, to the, uh, talking to the spouse might require interpersonal skills and emotional sensitivity. So the Wisdom Wheel app that I mentioned as well, uh, this can be used on a PC or smartphone, includes all 15 virtues. When you click on each virtue, questions arise, like for negotiation. Uh, are we negotiating with a patient, their family, their carers, my team, uh, courage? Are we having that necessary difficult conversation with the patient, their family's carers, or my own seniors or peers? And we've got three stages here. And I, this doesn't mean to say you should use them in three stages. Uh, but yeah, the first stage directly related to the patient. Two, stage two, the bigger picture. Uh, community, society and self and the team, such as, yeah, am I being a, a good mentor? Mentor, Am I finding uh, mentorship in the organisation? So the first six episodes and virtues are conveyed here. I'm not going to go through all these, uh, but you can see the episodes as they develop from medical school through to being experienced uh, GP and consultant and the virtues, the 15 virtues that we convey in each Episodes. Uh, and yeah, we start with an ethical dilemma or complex decision. Uh, this is what we did in the pilots. Uh, and then use the film series or excerpts to debate the issues that might be relevant. What is the overall purpose in this case? What are the particularities? Uh, and yeah, the Wisdom Wheel app can be used alongside those. And we also have a, a train the trainer package that can be delivered with the resources to support the organization and the people in their organization that feel confident uh, to train others in the ethos that's can. Uh, so yes, in the evaluation, we aim to disseminate and pilot the resources. We evaluated their impact uh, and we had a formative evaluation uh, part and the summative evaluation part. And uh, we produced a beta version based on the formative evaluation and the feedback from the summative evaluation was that yes they were helpful and they improved performance in clinical decision making in ethical clinical decision making as well as facilitating debate about wise uh, medical decision making more widely so what we're doing next uh yes we uh, uh have got that feedback from the um uh, from the evaluation and the film series plus other resources are now being used in medical schools and CPD programs and uh, in practice. And there are license arrangements for using the resources plus train the trainer and other support packages that might be uh, helpful. Uh, and the license fees mean that we can uh, uh, support the cover, the, the maintenance costs and uh, use, uh, adapt them as necessary, perhaps include other virtues and um, such as COVID-19 complexities. And we have been asked to support organizations with those, with decision-making uh, around uh, COVID-19 with the added complexities that bring. And yeah, the next project uh, 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 it also came out of the research, how important interprofessional groups are to making wise decisions. Uh, one of the virtues that was identified. But again, there's little empirical research on the virtues of uh, multidisciplinary team making, teams making decisions. So no resources out there to support that group. Uh, so that's our next endeavor. And we hope to start that early next year, providing we're successful with our next, uh, submission. So that's it. Thank you for listening. If you've got any questions or comments on this presentation, then you've got my email address at the start of this. 
and there's also that that link there for more information